Zombies, zombies, zombies. It seems like everywhere you look, these things are popping up everywhere in mainstream culture. I don't think we will ever see a point in human history where zombies aren't discussed or expressed by some artistic genius's work of art in the movie industry. It's ingrained in our culture at this point to idolize zombie-related media, mostly due to the flexibility of the genre. Lots of people turn their heads away in frustration to the topic because it's been so overdone these past few decades. It's understandable that, eventually, we'd get sick of it after being exposed to the zombie genre for so long, but every once in a blue moon you get really great gems like Dying Light or even Resident Evil that prove the genre has still been healthier than ever when it excels. Sure, you can name any one of the hundreds of thousands of bad zombie movies or games, but that's to be expected as the popularity grows. You can't really expect this same idea to continue on without maintaining its creative genius forever or having some sort of ripoff. Just look at Resident Evil 6, the game I covered previously. It's riddled with issues, despite being full to the brim with infected creatures and zombies. Even though it's considered a zombie game, I wouldn't necessarily put it in the same category as the greats that came before it. You'd think that with all of the great examples we've had of the zombie formula done right, or at the very least well, that there'd be no room for error when designing new games. Unfortunately though, like I said in my review for Ebola 3, sometimes you get developers who underestimate the quality of their own products and release a game that might not be as good as they think. Introducing Zombie Island This is one of those free-to-play Steam games that you basically waste an entire evening on. It's not that special in terms of gameplay or mechanics, but I'm talking about it today because there's a bigger issue behind free Steam games that I'd like to discuss further on and how it always boils down to the same disgusting stew that continues to rot in the zombie genre today. Normally I don't like to talk badly about free games, mainly because I didn't pay a cent to play them, but that feeling goes straight out the window when you realize that Steam is a public platform with tons of games on it, some of them are bound to be discovered and talked about. I doubt anyone has ever heard of this game, but I figured it's been a long time since I took a deep dive into another garbage free-to-play game that wasted more brain cells than it created. So let's get started. It goes without saying that the graphics are worse looking than a car accident. What happened? Is this the Unity engine, or is it the Urinal engine? Regardless, the game doesn't need to have exceptional graphics if it doesn't want to, but with even just the tiniest bit more effort, it probably could look better than it does. While playing, it feels like I was demoted to a Nintendo 64 console. Look at the walls of this building. Looks like I'm walking around in an eggshell. And what's up with these doors? You gotta crouch to get inside them. Who built these? The fucking Smurfs? Not like there's a use in exploration. You'll waste a lot of time traveling from place to place with zero knowledge of what your current objective is. When you first launch the game, you're met with this god-awful main menu. Always a classic sight for sore eyes, huh? This is going to be a good game, and I know it just by the first three stock images that were randomly pasted on this solid background. The game gives you a lot of options to play, including various story mode levels and horde mode ones. Nothing more, nothing less. Wait, what, what does that say? A secret level? Okay, I guess I'll check that out quick. One thing I can appreciate is the ability to sprint indefinitely, at least if the rest of the game is gonna bore the shit out of me, they were courteous enough to allow the player to run forever. You can even run backwards. You also have a 3D rendered body, which once again surprised me, considering you don't see many developers put that much effort into any first person shooters. Who's there? I'm so confused. What is this game about? Am I fighting soldiers or goddamn zombies? The game is called Zombie Island, yet here I am trapped within an insurgency sandstorm if it were demoted to the PS2, running with an army of generic soldiers alongside a group of... I don't know, these bald guys who look like monks or something, but they run like they're about to shit themselves. What the fuck is going on? All I did was follow the linear path in this level, killing zombies and people left and right, when suddenly I was going into a massive underground complex. Inside, I found this little fucking green thing just standing awkwardly by himself. What the hell is he? I don't even have any good analogies. Is he supposed to be an alien? And what does that say? He's shy? It takes a bit to show the way? Well, who the fuck is he? And why am I following him all the way back to the beginning of the map? Oh, that's why. 
because it was the only objective for the secret level. Makes plenty of sense to me. Run across a dead shrunken map with generic assets, find the fucking 12 year old wearing a morph suit, and walk all the way back. So that was the secret level, I guess. Not really much else to explore there. How about the main storyline? Well, would you really be shocked if I told you there isn't one? There are levels on the main menu that don't have titles or names, they're just numbered like a fucking to-do list, story 1, story 2. Each level consists of the same objective, kill all the zombies. That's it. Just like Clown Thug, another free-to-play game I covered a while ago, there is no other objective besides surviving against a wave of stereotypical enemies. You're given a random gun for each story mission, making the game feel like somewhat of a challenge by throwing zombies at you without any prior knowledge of your gear, I guess. That is how the enemies work, too. They have awful pathfinding on certain missions, and they quite literally walk towards you infinitely. They deal a lot of damage up close, but thankfully it's the only way they can damage you. I wasn't expecting like special infected or something in this shitty weekend waste of time, but the skill level needed here is kind of pathetic. You will never take damage so long as you keep your distance from the zombies, and headshots are an instant kill which makes me feel like an unstoppable force. There's no real threat here, unless you're playing with your eyes closed I guess, but there's also no real intuition implemented anywhere. This is very much a free to play steam game that required little effort. I don't know how to describe it, but the best recapitulation I can surmise from the overall game is it sucks. It's boring, it's buggy, and it looks like melted ice cream with mold overgrowth. Unfortunately, there aren't many silly mechanics this time around, you won't get any goofy cutscenes or bad voice acting. It's as simple as simple can be, and I suppose if you're someone who can't afford a single game ever, then you'll die happy knowing that this exists to play for free at any time. As for the rest of us, it's pretty obvious that a game like this doesn't contain the fundamental principles that a good bad game should have. It only has the begrudgingly slow feeling that puts me to sleep. The second level, you have to kill 32 zombies using only a bow an arrow, but aiming with this dog shit crosshair in the center isn't as easy as it looks. I know it looks like I suck fucking dick, but the camera is floaty as fuck, almost like you're holding a gimbal. Shooting the zombies anywhere but the head is a guaranteed mood killer, because you'll be stuck doing it all day. However, on the rusted side of that same coin, headshots are damn near impossible due to the unpredictable movement of the brain dead brain eaters. Look at this, I might as well be throwing my arrows in the fucking garbage, I can't hit any of these guys. Of course, it would help a shit ton if they actually moved like they were supposed to. It can be a little intimidating seeing how many zombies you have coming after you, especially when they're spread out across a large area. This feeling is immediately negated once you realize they're just gonna go at the exact same pace and form a single file line as they attempt to hunt you down and kill you. That's another thing. Why the fuck is the map so huge? I feel like I can go anywhere and everywhere in this dumpster fire, yet I can't possibly find a purpose as to why I would want to. There's no loot hidden anywhere, or secret things to find that I've come across, no structures to hide in, there aren't civilizations or vehicles, so why the fuck are we being forced to run across these massive empty wastelands that give Fallout 3 a run for its money? The map design is ugly too, and I know I keep coming back to that subject in particular, but it's hard to ignore. Some of the hills and terrains look like vomit if it were disguised as orange juice. Others just look flat or stretched out in such an uncomfortable image that my eyes twinge upon contact. Look at this opening level, where the fuck am I? A pixelated polygonal bugle? And what's that supposed to be, grass? It looks like someone wiped their ass after drinking a gas station slushy. Is it really that hard to program a hill in the Unity engine? The lighting is off too, in most of the interior areas everything is glossy and shiny, sometimes leaking sunlight through the walls and ceilings. It's not all that appealing to look at, I'll admit. I just wish it didn't look so poorly done and there's always a deep pit in my stomach when I review these indie dev games, because I understand you're probably really excited about what you're making and at the end of the day that's all that truly matters. You didn't ask me to pay money for this waste of time, so how can I be mad, right? Annoyed is a more accurate term I'd use, and I definitely want to encourage the developer, Thomas Harvey, to continue making games as they see fit, but maybe try a bit harder and take more time on it. 
you'd be amazed at what you can accomplish when you take a step back and give it some more effort the next time around. For now, I want to continue criticizing this because I feel as though some poor Steam user out there will discover your game, get lost, bored, or angry enough to try and Google a walkthrough just to find my dumbass ranting about it for over 10 minutes. Pathetic, I know, but surely you must understand that anything uploaded publicly to the Steam store that is available for purchase, free or not, is worthy of some constructive feedback. The zombie models all look the same. What is it with these pieces of shit that design the most generic looking zombies of all time? These ones look like cardboard cutouts that have come to life. How many games have we seen where the zombies are wearing a green shirt and blue jeans? The only other example I can think of is Zombie Carnage 2, which was a much more fun game than this. Here, the only thing these zombies do is function and look horrible. They walk after you in a generic hands-out animation like the fucking Frankenstein's monster. They make the same noises on loop just to add to that realism factor of going for the insanity speed run. It would do this game a lot of favors if they included some custom music. I mean, would it kill them to add some sort of ambiance to the game besides a bunch of generic nature sounds? If this is supposed to be an action game, why the hell would I want to listen to birds singing beautifully? Water doesn't have much of an effect here, it doesn't slow zombies or yourself down, so there's no real reason to mention it. At least it's something and not nothing, like in Clown Thug Cop Zombies, which didn't even have a fucking map. So yeah, it gets somewhat of a point for doing better than that game. That's not saying much though, that's like saying eating colored thumbtacks tastes better than eating glass. Either way, it's a boring slog with only one objective, plain and simple. But. I might as well check out the rest of the game. There isn't much, but there's more here that I'm sure Thomas Harvey would want us to explore together. Also, very weird that the developer's name is Thomas Harvey, my last name being Thomas and me owning a dog named Harvey. Weird. There's an option to play an endless horde mode for the game, but I couldn't get it to work. Booting up the first endless level and I was able to mosey around without taking any damage at all and I survived for five minutes. Of course, it would be imperative to mention that enemies would not spawn during the horde mode. Yeah, so either this game is broken or it's just so bad that the guy didn't want to finish the whole thing. Anyway, the other story modes don't matter too much. It's very much the same thing every time. Spawn, grab a gun off the floor, pick up the ammunition in tedious fashion, and then get ready for some of the worst action gameplay you've ever seen. The ambiance just repeats indefinitely on loop with the same sound effects over and over just to further frustrate you with the boring atmosphere and tension. There's no tension, obviously, this is just another recycled asset flip in the library of Steam, but I feel as though talking about it and pointing out its flaws might prevent more garbage like this from coming out. The guns all feel the same, with ridiculous recoil mechanics and a crosshair that flat out doesn't predict where your bullets will accurately travel. I swear, the bow and arrow is the worst weapon in the game due to the simple fact that it misses almost everything you try to shoot. If you're not fucking Robin Hood, chances are you're gonna struggle a lot to hit your mark. The one good thing the game has going for it might be the ragdoll physics. It's goofy and entertaining to watch the zombies die in such a stiff fashion, but it's not enough to keep me invested in the grand scheme of things. Shooting these assholes in the body does nothing, it's like rinsing a copper suit in microbial acid. You're not gonna do anything that way. Instead, you should focus your attention on headshots and keeping your distance. There's also an issue with the pathfinding of the zombies, if they can even find you half the time. Look at this, what the fuck's going on? A zombie family reunion? They're all trying to hug each other for Christ's sakes. The map also sucks, it's way too huge for this type of game I guess. You're given a random number of enemies to defeat in each level, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 120, but either way the gameplay remains the same. You're running across miles of forest and dead environments just to kill the five or six zombies that still function normally. The rest you'll have to seek out yourself and kill if they don't find their way to you. Oh yeah, the game fucking crashes if you press any buttons on your keyboard during the loading process. That's cute. Sometimes you'll be playing the game like an actual zombie in reality. You'll lose track of the enemy count on the map just to shoot the last guy and accidentally crash your game because of it. Honestly, what more could I say? It amazes me that Steam allows such games to exist 
exist on their platform, even if the price is free. These kinds of games are always being dumped into the library and mixed into the good shit that we love to play. Listen, everybody deserves a chance to show off their creativeness when it comes to video game design, but this is a lazy, undercooked mess. Nothing more. I'd say take it back to the drawing board and do what ARBs or even their land did, which was include a really goofy story with some voice acting alongside a plethora of wacky enemies to kill. If you're gonna make a trash video game, have fun with it, man. I don't know why more people don't do this, because the standard generic indie game formula is fucking awful. Zombie Island is the worst zombie game I've played so far, and the reason being it doesn't try to be anything more than what it is. You're a generic nobody fighting the same generic nobodies, and you can't do anything about it. Zombie Island doesn't let you do anything but suffer in silence. It's a massive waste of my time, my energy, and my patience. But I thought I'd review it for the sake of showing you all a game that just doesn't do it for me. By all means, you're more than welcome to try it out yourself, but you might want to have a ghost energy drink before hopping into it, otherwise you'll be asleep faster than me with a Benadryl in my system. Regardless, hopefully you enjoyed this video, I know it just seems like I'm being a dick to the developer, but the truth is, Steam needs to stop allowing these games to come out in such piss poor fashion. It doesn't matter if a game is free or not, when it's released on a public platform, in my opinion, it's just begging to be played by only the dumbest and sickest people of our planet, myself included. Look, I went through it, so hopefully you'll never have to, and that's fine by me. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time. Somebody,